I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is September 17th, 2020. And in this video, I'm going to be installing and doing a basic setup of a Rainbird ESPM E3 sprinkler controller. Now we're doing some landscaping this summer. Um, and as part of this, we're adding more sprinkler zones into our backyard. Now currently, I do have a Rainbird ESP TM2 for my sprinkler controller. And actually, I did a video on it recently where I showed how to program it. And I like it and it works really well. The only problem is it only has about, it only has six zones and we're going to have more than that. We're going to have definitely more than 10, no more than 20. We're still debating on a few of them, but we're putting a lot more zones than we had before. Uh, even more than we need to because we have, we'll have more control because we want some more. We kind of split up where it's sunny and shady so we can have, save some water. A lot of different ideas we have. So we need to upgrade. So what I found was this guy. So there's this ESP. ME3 rank controller from Rainbird. That is, the, it's mega. It is huge. And I'll show you here in a minute. It is big. Um, and if you look, and I'll put a link in the show notes to this. Um, and if you look at these things, they actually uh, come in different types. So be careful what you're getting. Uh, this one right now retails about 400 bucks with everything in it. And that's the big thing, everything in it. So currently you could buy it with nothing in it. No Wi-Fi and just, it can do four zones, but it's expandable. So this version that I'm linking to, which is one I bought, has everything included. So you can have these little modules, which you'll see. You'll see these little modules right here, and you'll, I'll show them as I as I show open the box. Um, you have four built in, but you can add three more of these little things. Each can do six, so you can get add them. So you can do up to twenty two. And I just went hog wild and said, "Give me all of them. Give me twenty two. So I don't have to think about it." Um, there's also a Wi-Fi module you can stick in there and connect to your Wi-Fi and control it that way. Now, in this video, all I'm going to do is replace my old one and get it wired up and then do a little bit of programming to it. But I'm not going to do the Wi-Fi yet because that's for another video. This is, you know, if you don't have the Wi-Fi or you just want to get set it up, how do you get it in there? How do you program it manually and get it going? And then at some point, because I like the Wi-Fi idea, is I will probably do another video once I figure out the Wi-Fi and get it all under control. So anyway, with that, let's go install it and get it running. Okay, so here's the big old box I got it in. So I had a few parts in here, but it was all pretty much pretty simple for what I need. So when I ordered this, and here it is, this thing's pretty big. It's also got a key lock if you really need to lock it up for some reason, but at my house, I think I'll be okay. So leave it in the permanently unlocked position. So we open this bad boy up, got our controls, then you can a little switch, flip right here. You can flip this whole thing out. Now we can get back to the guts. And now this, if you just bought this by itself, you'll have this first guy in here, which you can connect up to four things, one, two, three, four, four sprinklers. But depending on what you bought, like I bought the one where they added every other thing, these are add-ons. So I'm not sure how much they cost individually because I just went and got one that had every single one. And you can see each one of these adds six more. And I went the whole way so I can go all the way up to 22 different zones. Also, this came with the uh, online stuff, so you can hook this into the web. Now, I'm not going to do that yet, but I'll leave, it, I'll leave it plugged in. But that's also not a default. You don't get that by default. But with the kit I bought, it had everything. So, what I'm going to do right now is I've already taken out my old one. This is my old guy. I've already unplugged it. And I've plugged this one in, so I've got power. And what I'm going to do right now is reconnect it. Oh, and bef a good idea to do before you take out your old one is you have all these colored wires, right? So make sure you put them back how you, they should go. So it's a good idea to take a picture. I already took a picture, but I've actually done this so many times that I think I almost have it memorized. My wife's laughing at me now because I screwed one up the other day and it was backwards, like three was four and four. Anyway. <laughs> but, so if you've ever done this before, what you have is you see the COM. That's your common wire. So if you've already plugged everything in, you'll find out what your common wire is. And in my case, I know it's white. This one I do know. And so we'll hook that in. That's our common wire. And so, and that's the common wire for every single one. And so we need to complete a circuit. And so then we've connected one, two, three, four. And in this case, I only have four right now until I finish my backyard. But before I connect it, this has a neat feature. And what you can do is right here, you see this VT. I have to go look at what that meant. Something, something test. terminal test. Oh. I have to go. Look, I have to go look at what it, what it means. But I forgot the acronym now. I should have looked that up before I did this. But basically, this one's always on. 
So before you program it, you're like, well, I don't know before which one's which. So you can take one, hook it to it, and if we pan out to the outside, we can see that one's on. So that is actually our number one. So that's a nice way to test before you hook it in, because otherwise you've got to hook it in and program it and then test it, you know, and figure out which is which. But this is a nice little, really quick way where you can just go, okay, they're down, and then I'll go hit it again, and boom, they're up. So it's a nice way to test. So I come in here, hook that into one, and then I'll go, okay, which one's two, which I th think is the blue one, but I might be wrong on that. So I'll just go touch it. Yep, and then my second one came on. And then I'll hook it in. Okay, then my third one, I know I got a, I know I got a yellow and a green, but I forget which is which. So I'll try yellow on the VT. Yep, oh, yep, that's my third one. So, in this case, although it was a good idea to take a picture, I almost didn't have to, because you can do that really quick, nice test there. And I think that's going to come in handy when I do my backyard. I can plug things in, and I think I got it one way or another, and I can go do a real quick test and not have to program it. Okay, so now we're all in, we're all good. And I've got power plugged in. I'm not going to worry about this yet, like I said. And also, you know, you can put in sensors and flow meters, but I'm not doing that in this video. I don't even, I have a rain sensor, but I'm not going to bother with that in this. So, um, oh, uh, well, let me, let me program it first before I hook it on the wall. Okay, so for those who don't have to program these things, we're not doing the online thing. We're just programming it manually. So what you want to do is you're going to go to date and time, and you're going to put the date in. So here you can kind of go back and forth and select. So right now it is the 20th, but I can go up and down, you know, select September, and I can select the year, you know. So there's your day, and then keep going, and now set your time. Same thing, AM, PM, and I think you can do, yeah, you can do military time here if you want to. Uh, and then once you're set, you're good. So, done with my date and time. Now you got to set your start times. And what that does here is you can program this to do all your sprinklers in, in sequentially. It'll do like one, and then two, then three, then four, and so on. But it'll do them all in a row. So you'll say, hey, start up, in this case, start at 4 a.m. So you can change it. So the first one, I can change it, 345. But in this case, we want 4 a.m. So I'll say, hey, for the first round, 4 a.m. Second round, 5 a.m. But I could change it. You know, I can change it a little if I want. And third round, 6 a.m. And in our case, we don't want to do a fourth round, so we turn fourth round off. And I guess you can do a fifth and a sixth. You can go crazy on this. Six rounds. Wow. Okay. Now you've got that done. Now you want to do run times. How long do you want them to run? So we've got station one, which is my first set of sprinklers, and I say six minutes. But I can change that. because Sometimes here in Colorado, we want to change it based on the time of year. So I'll leave that at six minutes for now. Station two, six minutes. Station three, six minutes. And station four, six minutes. I kind of keep them all at six minutes now. But if I had one where I wanted to run it longer, I could change it. So I could say station three really needs eight minutes, and I can change it easy enough like that. So I could bump that up to eight if I wanted to. But okay, now, and then I don't have a station five. I don't have a station six. I could probably go all the way to 22, right? So I don't have 22 stations. Not yet, but someday. Okay, so now you've set those. So now those stations, when they run, they'll run, in my case, I set them all for six minutes, so they'll each run six minutes. Then you can choose your watering days. And so here you can see water, no water, water, no water. And so I can say Monday, oh, we can go back, see, let me go, I can say on Monday, I don't want to water, or I do want to water. Oh, now you're being... Okay, Monday, I do want to water. On Tuesday, I don't want to water. Wednesday, I do want to water. Thursday, I don't. Friday, I do. Saturday, I don't. And Sunday, we did this the other day, just a test, but now I don't want to water on Sunday anymore. So I'll set negative. And so now they'll turn on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. There's our weather sensor, which I'm not going to fiddle with. Seasonal adjustment, I think that gets weird. 
And so now we are done. And so now I turn it back to auto. So now based on these settings, what it's going to do is it will follow our start times. It'll say, hey, at 4 a.m. I'm going to start my first round. And then what I'm going to do is I know my run time. So I will run the, at 4 a.m. I'll run station number one for six minutes. Can and then, you say zone one? Zone one. I will run zone one for six minutes. And then when it's done, at 4.06 a.m., mm -hmm. it'll start to run zone two mm -hmm. for six minutes because I told it to see, like, well, here's zone two, six minutes. It'll run whatever I said. If I said eight, it'll run for eight. And then zone three, six minutes. So it'll run, so at 4, 4.06, 4.12, and 4.18, and it'll be done at 4, 4.24 with all my zones. So there, each run's running at one, there's only one zone running at a time. One, two, three, four. And so at 4.24, they're all done. And then at 5 a.m., it'll start again. So at 5 a.m., same thing. 5, 5.06, 5.12, and 5.18. So you can think about those things. And then it'll do it again at 6, and then we're done. So that's the programming. And it'll also do it on Monday. It'll only do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's it. So there's your manual programming. So I stick it to auto. And so now tomorrow, which is Monday, it'll run. Now the last thing we've got to do is actually mount this, which I did mount it earlier. So what I'm going to do is reopen this thing. And what they do is they do have some holes down here to mount it to the wall. You can you can see right there, and there are some some screws in the kit that I'm not going to use. I have my own deck screws I'm going to use. And they also have something to hang right here. But for me, if I hang it off that, it's going to wobble back and forth. So what I did is I lined what you got to hit a stud. And one thing I like for hitting studs, yeah, they're stud finders. But also when these guys put the drywall in, you know, they're nailing the drywall and are screwing it in. And those screws are metal. So I just use powerful magnets and I kind of do this and I end up finding one and I find another one and I know where the stud is. So what I did at first is I kind of got this where I want it to be height wise and then I marked it and then I kind of measured the distance between here, that little nub, and then I put a drill hole in here and put this screw in just a little bit out so I can hook onto it. So I can now, should be able to hook onto that guy, there we go. Hook on it pretty firm but yeah we can still technically wiggle a little bit. So after I got that done, since I'm lined up with that stud, that hole right there, I just went in here and drilled a hole. And then I should be able to get this guy back in. And then we're going to be on that wall nice and firm. I should never, in theory, have to worry about it wiggling anymore. Make sure you use a level. And make sure you use a level, yeah, because we uh, yeah, make sure you use a level, make sure you line up good. But in our case, we have this, and we also have a lighting system, so I made sure they were level with each other, too. So I used a big level to make sure that they didn't look out of place. So, there we go. And so now this should be fairly convenient when I want to wire some more in. I just got to pull the next wire through, and then hook these things up. And I can work like this pretty easily. But if not, you know, these things do come out and you can hook them back in, which that seems like more of a hassle. I think I'd just leave these in to work with them. But now we're done, so lock that in. We're on auto, we're plugged in, we're powered. We've tested them and we're good to go. But now, if you're not sure, now that you've got everything set up and you've got your runtime set up, if you want to see what's going on, you can kind of go run through a cycle. And so you can, if I remember right, my wife will correct me because she's done this more <laughs> than I have. You can go on auto, right, and then you can hit this one to hold it down. Click this and hold it down to start. And what it will do is in a second, it will run through your cycle. So right now it just kicked off row zone one. And so you can make sure you did things correctly because that will run for six minutes. And then go down and then the next one will run for six minutes. So that way it's a good way to test to make sure you did what you thought you were going to do. And that's it. So. Uh, in the future, I'll probably do some video on the Wi-Fi and, and the application because that seems like a cool thing. But for right sensor, now, maybe. and the sensor, I think a rain sensor. We have a rain sensor on the old one, but it was kind of flaky. Yeah. But I like to get a better rain sensor because you don't want to water when it's raining. Yeah. I have a feeling that the web application might be smart and know about the weather, so maybe you don't need a rain sensor anymore. But I don't, I don't know, not sure. But 
There you go, installed, good. At least a manual setup, which is fine for us for now. But pretty soon I'll have like 16 zones is the plan with my backyard. So that's what I need this, so, and I'll do some cool stuff. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.